In the heart of Cradle Moor, a town veiled in an otherworldly mist that clung to its secrets, Emily Harper's antique shop stood as a sanctuary for forgotten treasures. Nestled between creaking timbers and cobblestone streets, her haven beckoned to those who sought the peculiar and the mysterious. One dusky evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon and shadows stretched like long-forgotten memories, a peculiar restlessness seized Emily. An unseen force whispered on the breeze and lured her beyond the familiar boundaries of her quaint existence. Guided by an unspoken intuition, she navigated through the twisting alleys until the town's edge embraced the encroaching woods. There, where the natural world and the supernatural intermingled, Emily stumbled upon a forgotten workshop, concealed beneath a canopy of ancient oaks. The workshop, draped in an aura of time-forgotten sorcery, pulsed with the energy of an unholy alliance between the ethereal and the human. Intricate trinkets adorned sagging shelves, each one murmuring tales of bygone eras, and dusty tomes whispered secrets from their forgotten perches. In the heart of this clandestine sanctuary, Emily discovered the vendor known only as the Dollmaker. Cloaked in shadows that seemed to shift with every heartbeat, his presence had an eerie elegance, his gaze an enigma that transcended the mortal realm. His fingers, etched with the scars of a thousand creations, beckoned Emily toward an assembly of dolls, each a haunting reflection of life suspended in the twilight zone between reality and fantasy. Yet one doll, with porcelain features that mirrored an uncanny vitality, held her captive. A shiver traversed her spine as Emily caressed the doll's cold, unyielding surface. The doll maker, a spectator to her fascination, spoke in riddles that echoed through the hallowed space. Choose wisely, seeker of curiosities, for the path you tread is woven with threads of destiny and despair. The veil between the tangible and the intangible blurred in that timeless moment. Unseen forces conspired as Emily, compelled by a gravitational pull, left the workshop with the mysterious doll cradled in her arms. As the door closed behind her, the workshop exhaled an ancient sigh, a prelude to the silent pact forged between the inquisitive antiquarian and the forces that governed Cradle Moor. Unbeknownst to Emily, the first chord had been struck, setting in motion a series of traumas that would reverberate through her life, perpetuating a fight with the shadows that lurked just beyond perception. The line between reality and the supernatural trembled in Cradle Moor, as Emily, the unwitting harbinger of the dollmaker's cursed creation, returned to her quaint antique shop. The ominous doll, its porcelain gaze a silent witness to an ancient evil, occupied a place of honour, nestled amidst relics of forgotten eras. Nightfalls like a velvet curtain descended upon the town, casting its shadows upon the time-worn cobblestones. As the first tendrils of moonlight slipped through the shop's dusty windows, Emily shut the lights off in her shop and retirated to her home for the night. Meanwhile, a subly transformation unfolded. Unseen by mortalese, the mysterious doll stirred, its porcelain features contorting, into a semblance of a malevolent smile. The following morning, the whispers began, a delicate murmur that echoed through the corners of Emily's shop. The doll, an instrument of the supernatural, orchestrated subtle pranks. A creak here, a flickering light there. Something unknown had awakened the dormant spirits of the past. Emily, at first, dismissed the disturbances as mere quirks of an ancient building. A rational mind clung desperately to the mundane explanations, casting aside the tendrils of unease that coiled around her consciousness. But the doll, with its insidious sentience, knew the delicate art of insinuation. The moment of awakening came to Emily swiftly and traumatizingly. One evening as her shop was approaching its closing time, Emily walked down the dimly lit hallway to use the restroom passing the eerily attractive doll as she made her way. At the end of the hallway sat a mirror on the wall, next to the restroom. Upon leaving the restroom, to her surprise, the mirror now bore the writing, Come with us, in smeared red ink. Emily, letting out a scream, jumped back and quickly turned down the hall to see the doll, now sitting on the floor in the corridor, staring back at her almost smiling. She ran down the hall to her storefront, yelling, Who's here? Who did this? No response was heard. 
Now walking hastily towards the front door, Emily looks around her shop, but sees that no one is in her shop. Checking the lock, she finds it is steadily secured. The now frightened shopkeeper turns to once again gaze down the dimly lit hallway from which she came. The lights flicker, and to Emily's absolute terror, the doll, once sitting in the opposite direction, is now again staring back at her. The air in the shop thickened with an unseen tension, as if the very walls absorbed the whispers of tormented souls. Curiosities, once carefully arranged, found themselves relocated, a forgotten pocket watch now ticking its morose cadence from an unfamiliar shelf, a mirror reflecting shadows that lingered a heartbeat too long. The doll, now stationed frightfully on the floor, became the nexus of spectral energy that danced with glee in the face of Emily's growing disquiet. Its glassy eyes, once passive, now held a glint of mischief as they bore into her soul. The flickering gas lamps cast a spectral glow upon its countenance, giving life to the inanimate with an eerie luminescence. Emily, stricken with fear but still resolute, sought solace in the comforting rationale that this was merely a doll. But as each night descended, the doll's pranks escalated, transcending the boundaries of mere happenstance. A chilling breeze, as if drawn from the frigid breath of forgotten phantoms, whispered through the shop, carrying with it shadows yet to manifest. In the days that followed the unsettling acquisition of the enigmatic doll, Emily Harper plunged into the shadowed annals of Cradle Moor. The quaint town, ensnared in the cobwebs of its own history, harboured secrets that clung to the air like the scent of ancient manuscripts. Emily, driven by an insatiable curiosity that danced on the edge of trepidation, ventured into the archives of the town library, a repository of forgotten whispers. The air within the archives hung heavy, permeated by the musky scent of aged paper and the weight of bygone years. Dust motes swirled in the weak sunlight filtering through dusty windows, casting a spectral glow on the tattered pages of yesteryears. With each creak of the worn wooden floor, Emily felt the palpable presence of stories begging to be unfurled. She unearthed manuscripts bound in cracked leather, their pages yellowed with time and inked with tales of tragedy. The ink, now faded and reluctant, yielded the tales of those unfortunate souls ensnared by the dollmaker's curse. Names whispered from the pages, like the sighs of long-forgotten spirits, narrating the twisted lives entangled in the malevolent strings of his porcelain dolls. One particular narrative, written in the quivering hand of a tormented scribe, spoke of a love lost and a pact sealed in desperation. The ink seemed to bleed the agony of unfulfilled promises onto the parchment. Emily traced her fingers along the frayed edges of the manuscript, feeling the imprints of sorrow etched in the very fibres of the paper. As she delved deeper, the stories intertwined, forming a tapestry of lamentations woven with strands of sorrow and regret. The doll maker, an evil puppeteer orchestrating the tragedy unto the unsuspecting lives of his customers and reshaping existence with an unholy hand, was revealed to be a harbinger of doom. In the dim-lit corners of the archives, where the shadows whispered forgotten truths, Emily stumbled upon an unsettling revelation. The doll she now possessed was once a living soul, ensnared in the twisted craftsmanship of the doll maker. The realization sent a shiver down her spine, as the eyes of the doll seemed to reflect the agony of a life lost and the horrors of an afterlife in porcelain bondage. In the stillness of the archives, Emily found herself caught in the dissonance of a haunting symphony. An ode to the cursed, an elegy for the forgotten. The doll maker's dark artistry, unveiled through the fragile pages, echoed through the chamber, resonating with the full-on whispers of souls confined to an eternity of hollow gaze. As Emily emerged from the archives, the weight of revelation pressed upon her shoulders. The town, oblivious to the shadows that clung to its history, continued its daily rhythm. Yet Emily could not escape the knowledge that the dolls, with their haunting eyes, held within them the echoes of lives extinguished by the masterful hand of the doll maker. Armed with the haunting tales from the past, Emily felt the urgency to confront the evil that now lingered in the porcelain casing of the doll named Clark. The town of Cradle Moor lay ensconced in silence as the moon cast an ethereal glow upon its twisted streets. Emily Harper's quaint antique store, once a haven for curiosities, 
now echoed with the disquieting whispers of a malevolent force. The ominous presence of the doll named Clark had escalated from mere pranks to an agenda of terror, plunging Emily into a feverish nightmare entwined with reality. The second sign of Clark's wrath unfolded in the dimly lit confines of Emily's antique shop. Porcelain dolls, once positioned with eerie precision, now lay scattered and shattered like broken dreams. Emily, her hands trembling, tried to dismiss the disturbance as the whims of a mischievous spirit. Yet as the clock ticked away the hours, the atmosphere thickened and shadows seemed to move with a life of their own. In the solitude of her home, Emily found solace elusive. Clark's insidious antics reached new heights as creaking floorboards echoed through the silence as if unseen feet traversed the hallway. Sleep, once an escape, became a realm where the line between dreams and reality blurred. Nightmares of porcelain eyes staring into her soul haunted Emily, leaving her waking in cold sweats and gasping for breath of sanity. Back in the gloomy recesses of her shop, Emily studied age manuscripts and obscure texts piecing together a ritual that promised to sever the tendrils of the curse. The incantations, written in a language forgotten by time, resonated with an ominous energy. To break the curse, Emily needed relics from her life. A lock of hair, a vial of tears, and the remnants of a shattered heart. Yet the path to peace was fraught with peril. Each relic, a macabre reminder of the dollmaker's dark alchemy, demanded her utmost attention before she could quell the dollmaker's hold. Unwavering in her determination, Emily embarked on a perilous quest, guided only by the flickering lantern light and the echoes of her own heartbeat. As she ventured deeper into the town's secrets, the air thickened with a palpable rage. Shadows clung to her like phantom hands, and the night seemed to swallow her presence whole. The line between the living and the lifeless blurred, and the dolls that once adorned her shop seemed to whisper. The wind laden with whispers of long-forgotten lamentations, swept through the desolate woods surrounding Cradle Moor. Moonlight spilled through the gnarled branches, casting a silvery glow on the hidden workshop of the dollmaker. In the heart of this spectral realm, Emily Harper, the unwitting antiquarian, stood at the precipice of a confrontation with the malevolent dollmaker. The wind, laden with whispers of long-forgotten lamentations, swept through the desolate woods surrounding Cradle Moor. Moonlight spilled through the gnarled branches, casting a silvery glow on the hidden workshop of the Dollmaker. In the heart of this spectral realm, Emily Harper, the unwitting antiquarian, stood at the precipice of a confrontation with the malevolent Dollmaker. The workshop, a place of nightmares veiled in shadow, seemed to come alive with a sinister energy. A haunting melody echoed through the air, another worldly lament that resonated with the agony of the dolls trapped in their porcelain prisons. Emily's footsteps, though hesitant, echoed with a determination born of necessity. Clark the doll, with eyes like obsidian mirrors reflecting the abyss, was clutched under her arm as she approached her final destination, the doll maker shop. Its porcelain countenance portrayed neither glee nor malice, yet an ominous aura surrounded it, as if the very air recoiled from its presence. Emily's breath caught in her throat as she approached, her pulse a continuous erratic drumbeat. Amid this surreal confrontation, Emily's resolve tightened. She clutched the relics she had collected, their significance known only to her, and the ancient incantations she had unearthed. Off in the darkened distance, the dollmaker's grin widened, anticipating the desperation that fueled her defiance. As the clock's hands whispered their ominous lullabies in the darkest corner of Cradle Moor, Emily Harper stood at the precipice of the ethereal abyss. The dollmaker's hidden workshop, a sepulcher of malevolent secrets, loomed like a spectre in the silent woods, awaiting the final act of a haunted play. The moon, cloaked in a shroud of wispy clouds, cast a spectral glow upon the desolate landscape. The air, thick with the scent of foreboding, crackled with the energy of unseen forces. Emily's pulse echoed the restless cadence of the woodland, a rhythm both foreboding and alluring. The dollmaker's workshop, once obscured by the impenetrable embrace of the woods, now beckoned like a malevolent siren. Emily's breath hung in the cold night air, a visible testament to the trepidation that gripped her. The haunting memories of the doll's malevolent pranks and the cryptic revelations of the cursed town fueled her determination. 
As she approached the workshop, the air thickened with an unnatural tension, each step resonating with the weight of her decisions. The door, creaking on rusty hinges, yielded to her touch, revealing a chamber steeped in an unholy ambience. Moonlight filtered through cracked windows, casting elongated shadows that danced upon the walls like phantoms in silent lament. The door to the workshop creaked open, as if guided by the hand of a ghostly conductor, orchestrating the macabre symphony. Shadows danced on the walls, their silent waltz a prelude to the spectral showdown that awaited within. The doll maker, a spectral figure in the dimness, awaited her arrival. His eyes, windows to the abyss, bore witness to the centuries of anguish he had wrought upon Cradle Moor. The dolls, once animate with the tormented souls of the cursed, stood as silent witnesses to the unfolding drama. The doll maker materialized from the shadows, his eyes gleaming with an ancient malevolence. You've come to us, my dear, he crooned, a voice like rustling leaves in a graveyard. To challenge the threads of fate woven by your own curiosity. Emily's gaze never wavered as she locked eyes with the doll maker. I demand to know the truth, she declared, her voice a whisper that cut through the spectral melody. What cursed situation have you entangled me in? The dollmaker's laughter, a haunting chorus of the damned, reverberated through the workshop. Truth is a tapestry woven with threads of agony and secrets buried in the marrow of forgotten bones, he replied cryptically. As Emily and the dollmaker faced each other, Clark's eyes flickered with an ethereal light. The doll, once a mere puppet, is now a conduit for the evil that pulsated through the workshop. You seek to sever the ties that bind us, Clark intoned, its voice a haunting echo. But the threads of destiny are not so easily unraveled. Stepping into the workshop, Emily felt the weight of a thousand eyes upon her. The doll maker's dolls, frozen in their porcelain agony, seemed to stir with an otherworldly anticipation. Clark, the sinister doll with eyes like bottomless voids, sat upon a dusty pedestal, a harbinger of doom. In the dim light, the dollmaker emerged from the shadows, his presence, a nebulous aura that seemed to distort reality. His eyes, twin pools of abyssal knowledge, bore into Emily's soul. A voice, ancient and laden with the weight of forgotten epochs, resonated through the chamber. You have come drawn by the siren song of forbidden knowledge, but can you weather the tempest it brings? Emily, her nerves wound tight like the strings of a violin, held the doll that had initiated this unholy dance. Clark's malevolent gaze seemed to intensify, a harbinger of the supernatural clash that awaited. The room trembled with an otherworldly energy as Emily and the doll maker locked eyes. The air crackled with a malevolent tension, and the doll's haunting gazes flickered with a spectral awareness. Clark, the harbinger, stirred as if animated by an unseen force, and the dollmaker raised his hands in a preternatural gesture. The showdown unfolded with a phenomenon, a whirlwind of shadows, disembodied whispers and flickering lights. Emily, caught in the maelstrom, confronted her deepest fears manifested in physical form. A chorus of tortured souls echoed through the chamber, a symphony of despair that seemed to pierce the veil between the living and the dead. The dollmaker's creations suddenly sprung to life. Each wielding their own deadly weapon, they slowly marched towards Emily. Emily, fueled by a resilient spirit, clutched the cursed doll with unwavering determination. The dolls, with murderous intent, converged on Emily from every direction. A doll with pigtails and a pink dress, armed with a fork, leaped onto Emily's back, impaling her with crude weaponry. Meanwhile, a nutcracker-like doll lunged towards her leg, biting into Emily's flesh. A squelching echoed through the room. Emily let out a loud scream. More and more dolls converged and pounced on Emily, each with a unique barbarous weapon, all under the compulsion of the dollmaker's desires. Her situation became more dire by the second, and the dolls continued to hack and slash at her flesh, opening wounds and pooling her blood beneath her. As a last-ditch effort to save herself, Emily blindly reached around in the chaos of her situation, now down on her knees, desperate to survive. Clinging to a piece of wood, she now realises is a loose leg of a table, and she thrusts it towards her. 
With the leg coming undone, the table falls, crushing a raggedy red-haired doll's porcelain head. With a loud scream and a fit of rage, Emily began thrashing around, ripping the dolls from her person. With newfound energy, the prey had become the predator. Emily, possessed with rage, relentlessly bludgeoned and broke every doll's insight. Shattering screams of porcelain reverberated through the shop as one by one Emily reduced the maniacal creations of the doll maker to piles of ceramic waste. When the dust had settled and the rage subsided, Emily stood, bloodied and battered, but alive. Her attention and gaze now turned to the doll maker. Emily confronted the doll maker with the forbidden knowledge she had unearthed. The doll maker, aghast at the revelation, recoiled as the foundations of his cursed dominion began to unravel. Emily Harper, the doll maker intoned, his voice a spectral murmur that echoed through the chamber. You tread upon the precipice of your fate. Do you comprehend the gravity of the path you have chosen? Emily, her resolve fortified by the crucible of terror, met the doll maker's gaze. I understand more than you know. The curse ends tonight. Armed with a wooden table leg and an ancient relic, a collision of forces ensued in a blinding crescendo of supernatural energies. Emily lunged forward, swinging first the table leg and knocking the withered man to the ground. She then thrust the relic hard into the dollmaker's sternum as he winced in pain. The man dollmaker was quickly overwhelmed. The dollmaker's workshop quivered as if caught in the throes of an otherworldly storm. As Emily engaged in the ritual, the air pulsated with unholy energy and the boundary between the living and the spectral realms blurred. A tempest of shadows whirled around her and the dollmaker's workshop resonated with anguished whispers from forgotten souls. The dolls, once instruments of malevolence, shuddered as the curse recoiled upon itself and then silence. The dollmaker, diminished and bereft of his spectral veil, stared at Emily with eyes that mirrored a profound weariness. You have broken the chains, Emily Harper, but beware the echoes that linger. The price of salvation may yet reveal itself. The workshop stood frozen, caught in the aftermath of a spectral tempest. Emily, panting but victorious, stood amidst the stillness, the cursed doll now lifeless in her hands. The doll maker, his visage etched with defeat, faded into the shadows like a wisp of forgotten memory. Cradle Moor, released from the malevolent grip, exhaled a collective breath. The dollmaker's dominion crumbled, and the haunted dolls, now inert, bore witness to the ephemeral triumph of the living over the spectres of the past. As Emily emerged from the workshop, the first light of dawn painted the sky with hues of redemption. The cursed town, released from the shackles of the dollmaker's curse, seemed to sigh in relief. The ethereal symphony that had haunted Cradle Moor now faded into the recesses of history. Yet as Emily walked away, the shadows lingered, whispering secrets of forgotten realms and unholy bargains. The supernatural showdown had ended, but the spectre of the dollmaker's workshop would forever linger in the collective memory of Cradle Moor, a tale of a courageous soul who dared to challenge the bounds of mortality and emerged, forever changed, from the crucible of supernatural strife. The air in Cradle Moor bore the weight of unsung lamentations as Emily emerged from the shadows of the dollmaker's workshop, her spirit forever tethered to the tendrils of the supernatural. The moon, a pale witness to the arcane ballet that had unfolded, cast a feeble glow upon the cobblestone streets. It seemed as though the very stones beneath her feet whispered echoes of forgotten tragedies. The town, a silent accomplice to the macabre drama, exhaled a sigh that resonated through the rustling leaves and crumbling facades. Shadows clung to the corners of buildings, their elongated forms mimicking the lingering dread that wrapped around Emily like an intangible shroud. In the wake of the ordeal, the antique store stood as a solemn monument, bearing witness to the inexplicable. The once familiar artifacts within held the secrets of a night when the boundary between the mundane and the mystical blurred into an indistinct realm of uncertainty. As Emily crossed the threshold of her store, a spectral chill settled within its confines. The artifacts seemed to gaze upon her with a knowing solemnity, acknowledging the transformative dance with the unknown that had transpired. The enigmatic doll, once a harbinger of malevolence, now lay dormant, its porcelain visage an epitaph to the horrors it had wrought. 
A spectral hush pervaded the town, as if the very essence of Cradle Moor was exhaling a collective sigh of relief. The curse had been shattered, the tendrils of the Dollmaker's malevolence severed. Yet, as the last vestiges of the supernatural storm subsided, an eerie resonance lingered in the stillness. Emily, her eyes now mirrors reflecting the unfathomable, gazed upon the town she had sought to save. The shadows, though less menacing, clung to the corners, a reminder that the line between the mundane and the mystical was forever blurred in Cradle Moor. As Emily closed the door to her store, the antique bell rang a mournful dirge, signalling the end of a chapter that Cradle Moor would speak of in veiled words and haunted glances. Emily once again walked down the dimly lit hallway, thinking to put Clark in storage, as he was an item she could not imagine being relieved of. While occupied, she heard the bell jingle to the front door. She rushed out, Clark still in tow. Emily gasped. Staring back at her, strewn around her entire shop, were dozens of dolls, now without their murderous intent, but instead very still and almost laying in wait. It was then Emily realised the curse she thought she'd broken was not broken at all. The doll maker's crown had been passed on to her. Silent whispers of the trapped, tormented souls now resonated in Emily's head, where there was once a look of fear on her face, slowly turned into a grin as she contemplated the possibilities of her new future as the doll maker. Emily looked down to the ground beside her to see Clark staring back up at her. <laughs>